Hi people and welcome to the show and I'm really sorry that you've had to wait since 6.30 till 7 o'clock. This is only during the month of Ramadan and believe me on the 20th of August when the month of Ramadan is over we'll be going back to our 6.30 p.m. usual slot. So really really sorry about this but this is the only time of year that this actually happens. So I'd just like you to introduce you all to my um, guest this week and that is Ian Taylor, um, Area Manager from Nottinghamshire Fire Rescue Service. And he's here to talk about compliance with small Asian businesses and because they've been prosecuted at an alarming rate. So we'd like to talk to Ian and discuss what's going on and more importantly, how do we actually comply with fire safety le legislation? So Ian, welcome to the programme. Good evening. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Should go after yourself? Yeah, absolutely great. So with fire safety, can you just talk about who you are, what your role is and what you do? What we do. I oversee a department of 30 odd people in Nottinghamshire Fire and Rescue Service and the department's role is to inspect buildings that aren't generally people's homes to make sure they're safe from fire and that in the event of a fire people can safely evacuate without being injured or even worse killed. That sounds very simple in itself, however what we find is a lot of the buildings that we go into comply because they're aware of the legislation. Mm -hmm we're finding increasingly that some of the buildings we go into from small medium enterprises aren't aware of the fire safety law or if they are their awareness is so small they're putting themselves and their businesses in jeopardy. I hope people you're catching the gist of this because we're talking about fire safety, fire safety for yourself, fire safety for your premises, for your businesses, for your staff and for your customers. And I think it might just be a good idea, Ian, because we've got lots of pictures that is brought in to show you exactly what we mean. And I hope you can get a close-up of this. And um, Ian's holding up a picture with, well, lots of mess and the fire exit door that's been completely it's a, blocked. It's a fire escape that's been blocked. Uh, and this was in a factory in Nottingham. And the owner was actually prosecuted for not actually sorting that out. So that's premises. That's um, premises. Okay, so were there like many staff involved in this? On this particular business there are only, I'll say a handful of staff, somewhere in the region of about five to eight members of staff. But it was sufficient, it was sufficient to warrant an appearance in court and a sentence. So can we talk about roughly how long they were sentenced for something like this? This particular uh, case, um, we visited the premises and we actually served a notice called an enforcement notice saying there are things in here that need rectifying to make sure your business is safe mm -hmm. and despite that happening yeah we're getting a close-up of this now so if you just hold so it up um, so we're getting a close-up of this going on straight on the screen so yeah so okay despite this and, and some other breaches of fire safety law at the premises the owner never made it safe and we actually took him to court for actually not complying with one of our enforcement notices in this particular case he got fined somewhere in the region of about four thousand pounds cost and 200 hours community service. Okay, can we hold some more pictures up as well so our viewers can see exactly what it is that we're talking about in terms of fire safety and the kind of premises the fire safety team actually goes in and prosecutes. Now, what we're looking at here is... Um, what we're looking at here is... a staircase. It's a staircase in a hotel above... Uh, it was a public house, but it could have been above any other sort of retail premises. And this was a fire escape for anybody that was in sleeping upstairs um, and as viewers can see hopefully it's dangerous so in the event in the middle of the night somebody having to rush out in a fire they run the risk of not being able to get out at all from that particular uh, so what staircase. we're actually looking at people is stairs with lots of boxes around the side and the fire exit door is actually at the bottom but, but they're actually quite neatly stashed around the side isn't it so are. is that not good enough it's not necessarily that it's not good enough yeah. because unfortunately the top of the stairs had this and what people can just see, just past the chair, is where it starts to go down. So if anybody in the middle of the night tripped or knocked any of that off, and some of it's precariously stacked, they wouldn't be able to get out. So these people are actually being prosecuted? So these people are being prosecuted, and the owner of that particular hotel served for... We have a few more pictures so to show. So a few more pictures. He served, yep. and this one as well, he served eight months in prison, or I was sentenced to eight months in prison for the conditions they found at that hotel. So and what we're basically saying is that your fire exit shouldn't be through a storeroom? 
shouldn't be through a storeroom and she shouldn't treat your fire exit as a storeroom. Okay, can we show you the other one that you were showing me earlier? And that was where the fire safety door opened into another enclosed space. Yeah. A large retail premises, fire exit there, that in itself looks great. It looks like you can walk that looks through perfect it quite easily. Though, doesn't it, yep. really? Unfortunately, what you see behind it are a series of doors here, and from the outside, these doors are locked. So if anybody had made their way through that fire exit to those doors, they could have found themselves trapped in this area here. And if a fire had been severe and they couldn't have got out, they could have died, even though it looks like they're right next to fresh air. So, so they could actually die in there. It, just, it does it appear could. that there's some um, extra um, light and yeah. air, so that wouldn't save them. Not necessarily, because if the smoke's thick enough and the heat's strong enough, it'll find its way through and unfortunately kill people. When we're talking about being able to escape, we're talking about them actually being able to walk completely away from the building to an area where they are completely safe. Right, so people, what we're trying to say here is that even if you have perfect looking fire exit doors, that shouldn't then go into a enclosed space where it's not ca you know, cautioned yeah. off or you know, yeah. rinsed off. They can actually walk into you know, the next street or go call for help and so on and so forth. Yeah. Okay, we have one more picture if we could show the ceilings, yeah, yeah, at this stage. And this is another one, if you'd like to talk yeah. through it, Ian. Sometimes, and, and we, we might talk about this later on, when we go into buildings, we look up, and between certain types of buildings, we can see the floor above. And it's this sort of situation. You can just see where the ceiling is and see the floor joists and possibly the floorboards above. But what's wrong with that, Ian? I mean, that is what you're meant to see, isn't it, surely? It is, unfortunately. In a lot of places we see, particularly where we get a, a, a shop or a small restaurant and sleeping accommodation above, there's no fire resistance. So any fire could go straight through this gap here and start burning through the floor above and, and, and seriously compromising the life chances of anybody in the flat above. So when I we just see have one question on that. So you can, we can see the joys, but isn't that because you've actually taken it off? Wouldn't it be actually normally No, be sometimes covered? we go into premises and we can actually see the joists or the ceilings part come down, okay. these sorts of things. And that just tells us that there's not the fire resistance that we require or should be there between the commercial premises and, and the sleeping accommodation above. We've got some more over there on the table. So we'll just like to show everybody before we start this programme what kind of issues we're actually talking about. Okay. Sometimes we come across electrics like this and what you can see is firstly where there should be fire resistance here there's a hole in the wall so any fire can get in or out through the wall or more importantly the smoke which is the one that kills and secondly what you see is a jumble of wires this increases the likelihood of a fire starting it's older looking wiring so increases the likelihood of a fire starting so when we start to assess a building we think that the safety in there the levels of safety in there are lower. It, it really doesn't help a building. So we're talking about managing risk then, are we? Very much the managing risk side of things, about taking responsibility for the risk and making sure that what's in there is appropriate. If we look at this, and this one shows a small kitchen in an area, again, used as a, as a small hotel, what you can see is a door, and the door looks perfectly normal and it should be there. Unfortunately, this door isn't a fire door. And one of the things we look to do is to protect the corridor areas where people would use for the escape, their means of escape from the kitchen with fire resistance. And although it looks like a door that's from home, it unfortunately it's not substantial enough to give that fire resistance. The other thing it should have is it should be able to self-close and it doesn't appear that there's any device to make sure that door shuts closes itself. So a fire in that kitchen could quite very quickly, within a matter of seconds or minutes, depending on what's burning, reduce the life chances of anybody who may have to use that corridor as their way out of a fire. So was this particular establishment prosecuted? This one was prosecuted. That was the same as the hotel where the, the hotel owner and the person that did the fire risk assessment both were sentenced to eight months in jail. Right. You know, that particular picture is quite interesting, simply from the point of view that with Asian businesses, with takers in restaurants, they usually open plan. So never mind a door, there would be no door. Yeah. So was this particular hotelier doing something wrong? The hotelier had, had, had done a number of fundamentally things wrong. He brought in a risk assessor 
who wasn't competent mm -hmm. to do risk assessment. And the risk, assessment, risk assessor said, yes, the hotel itself and the business was fine when it wasn't. Mm -hmm. The hotelier had then not managed properly. So in terms of stuff he hadn't, within that risk assessment, he hadn't got the right things in place. He hadn't actually assessed what the risk was to make sure that he had the fire resisting doors, that he had a fully functioning alarm system, smoke detection and emergency lighting. Mm -hmm. That is about managing the risk to people. Ian, can we show our viewers some of these big, fat, thick, I don't know, legislation or articles? Well, what are they? What have we got here? These are guidance documents. These are produced by de or Department of Communities, local government, and they're designed so that people can actually undertake their own risk assessment of the buildings. They're designed, click, click for the, that, so. they're designed for the layperson. So what they do is they give examples of how you should look at design layouts to ensure people can escape from fire, advice on uh, storage, prevention of fire risks. And businesses are meant to read those kind of read. documents. So when we ask people to do a risk assessment, we'll ask them to complete a risk assessment form and also to have cognizance of the guidance they should use. So for example, what it'll say here is, well, if you have a two-story business, this should be the sort of escape strategy that you so should have So where would people place. get this from? People can buy these from uh, relevant suppliers, or they can be downloaded free of charge from the community and government website, which is www communities.gov.uk. And what about some of the other books that are there? What, what are those all about? We've got other books here. This is one that was produced a few years ago. It's called Do You Have Paying Guests? And this is designed for small bed and breakfast type establishments. But the one thing that I think is fantastic in here is the very simple risk assessment process. And it tells people how to conduct a fire risk assessment in five easy steps. Again, this can be downloaded from the Communities in Government website, www.communities.gov.uk. Does this risk assessment process or the protocol apply to all businesses? So not everybody's you know, going to be having bed and breakfast, so could no. a takeaway apply it, a meat shop apply the, it? The, the principles of the risk assessment will apply to every business out there. However, what will change will be the guidance. Okay. So, for example, in an office or shop, the guidance is in one form. Mm -hmm. When you move to something like residential accommodation, where people are sleeping, possibly in residential care type premises, the requirements for fire safety are increased because people are sleeping and there are more vulnerable people present in the, in the premises. The principles of the book are the same. They're designed for the lay person to understand. However, the actual guidance and technical detail does change from book to book. But the five-step process to risk assessment, which in my opinion is relatively simple and easy to use, applies all the way across the, the guidance documents. I mean, I don't know how our viewers are feeling about all these thick books, but I'm just getting a bit nervous just, just looking at them. So if somebody doesn't understand and is daunted by the prospects of, I don't know, it looks like about 200 pages there, yeah. well, what, what do they do? What's, what, what help is there for them? Well, in the first instance, actually just have a think about your risk assessment. Have a look at your business. How big is your business? Is it recently in a recently constructed building and are you managing it well? If you start trying to figure a way through a risk assessment and you get tied in knots because you can't do it, then the next best thing to do is to bring in somebody who could undertake that risk assessment for you, a nominated fire risk assessor. Can they just not simply ring up the fire station and say help? Can you help us understand this legislation? We can provide certain amounts of help and guidance, but the legislation for fire risk assessment currently and the, and, and the fire safety order as it stands is very much down to the individual. It's for the business to undertake that risk assessment themselves and the fire service to come along and actually audit and scrutinise that risk assessment and the building to see if they've actually got it right and are managing it in, in accordance with the way it ought to be managed. 
the Fire and Rescue Service is able to give a certain amount of advice and we are able to give advice on request. What we can't do is we cannot undertake that fire risk assessment yeah. for the business. Okay. So for example, if somebody said, well actually I've got a difference between two or three solutions, which do you think could be better? Then I'm fairly sure the local Fire and Rescue Service would be able to point them in a direction or at least to be able to point out the pros and cons mm. of each of the different solutions. What we can't do is go out and say, well, you need to do this, you need to do that, mm. because the way that the legislation is structured, like most health and safety legislation today, it's about self-assessment and, most importantly, self-compliance. People, the reason why we have this programme on air today is simply because fire legislation is the law. So you have to comply. And in the eventuality of non-compliance, you're looking up to a two-year prison sentence, custodial sentence, along with unlimited um, figure on fines and there's some large, very large corporations that have been caught up in this. So it's really, really important to grasp the basics, to undertake these risk assessments because Asian businesses right across the UK are getting caught up in this. And you know, Ian, I was saying before, like Asian businesses, businessmen, they're in they're in the business of making money. They're not there, they're not, you know, they're not like, you know, robbers and murderers, they're not in that category of people. So how come so many are getting caught up? A number of reasons for it. I think the first is that when you're setting a business up, you're in the business to make money. And that's the way that business should be. It's profit oriented. And often businesses are, are going along looking at how best they make their money. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, they forget sight of a lot of the other requirements around on a business. They might remember the accounting procedures. They might remember the, the elements around setting the company up and directorships. If it's a food business, for example, they might recognise and most probably will recognise their issues around food hygiene and food mm. safety standards to deal with. But fire safety quite often gets lost in the ether. On other times, there's a cultural thing that actually if you, if you come from an area where there's no fire safety standards or very low fire safety standards, there's just an ignorance that they even exist. Mm. And for those sort of people, unfortunately, there is fire law in the, the United Kingdom. What we find is that most people, when, when it's pointed out to them, go, really, I didn't realise, and then work to rectify it and put things right. Right. What I'd really like to know is, how do you guys know, with all the pictures that we've seen, that this stuff has been going on? How, how, I mean, you, you must be in your office somewhere. So how do you get out? How, who, who, who tells you? Who, who, you know, we don't, have a, we don't have a magic crystal ball. Okay. Um, sometimes we do routine inspections and we'll say, well, we need to go and visit some of these premises, so they'll be picked out at random, and we go, and we go, oh, there's a problem. Most okay. times there isn't. What we do do is we work with other agencies, so we work with people like environmental health, mm -hmm. food safety teams, and other agencies like the Borders Agency and the Gangmasters Licensing Authority, okay. and we work with them and we educate them, saying, look, if you come across some conditions like this, and when I look at where we've prohibited or prosecuted, somewhere in the region of about 70% of those have come from agency referrals from those other agencies. Other times we get complaints from members of the public saying we've just been into somewhere and we think it's unsafe. And again, that gives us cause to go into the premises, investigate and find out if, if their complaint is valid or otherwise. So suppose you've had a complaint about a particular business and you've gone in. So what's the process? What actually happens? So you've turned up. You, what, what, in your opinion, is a death trap? What would you actually close down? How, 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 does how it do we do it? Yeah. The, the legislation says that there must be a serious risk of death or injury as a result of the fire. So it's a risk, it's not an actual fire. It's not an actual fire. We're, all, you, we're, talking, we're just completely no, talking about You don't about have risk. to have a fire. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have anybody injured. You don't have to have anybody die on the premises to cause us to go in and have a look around. Okay. Um, we have the powers to have a look at any reasonable time How anyway. come you have these powers? How, how does that come about? It comes about through legislation. The Fire and Rescue Service have powers under different acts. So under the Fire and Rescue Services Act, we can enter the premises at any reasonable time to gather information about the premises for the purposes of firefighting or rescue. But, but in terms of fire safety, mm -hmm. we have the powers that we can enter at any reasonable time to, in to make sure that the fire safety order is being complied with. Okay, we're going to have to have a quick break here, so please come back and we'll be watching the rest of this program really carefully because we really need to know how to comply with this fire legislation. So please do come back after the break. Mm -hmm. 